Okay, continuing on with the idea of exponential equations where we have equal bases in there that we have to find. In this one, it looks more complicated because we have 5 to the 32nd power. Okay, that's like stupidly large. And then divided by 5 to the 4x equals 5 to the x squared. So let's walk through this one step at a time. For one thing, when you're using exponential equality, okay, the principle of exponential equality, it always wants one exponent on one side, one exponent on the other. So can we reduce this thing right here to just a single exponent? And if you remember the quotient rule, you'll, re you'll realize this can be written as 5 to the 32nd power minus 4x equals 5 to the x squared. Okay, that's the quotient rule. And at this point, it's pretty easy to factor it uh, if you just cross out the 5s on each side because of exponential equality. And now we have 32 minus 4x equals x squared. Well, rearrange a little bit, and we'll get 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 32. And what is that? That's going to be 0 equals, hmm, uh, let's see, the factors of 32, um, there's a bunch, but I think 8 and 4 are where we want to go with this. So that just means x equals 4 and negative 8. Okay, and we're done. Next one. This looks bad because there's a radical in it, but remember, all we really need to do is rearrange the exponents a little bit, and we can find a 7 inside that radical, no problem. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say 7x squared on the left. We'll keep that as it is. And on the right, let's change this to... Uh, oh, I don't know. We'll put another parenthesis in here and say that's 7 to the 1 half power. And that's still raised to the 3x plus 5. Now remember, when you raise an exponent to another exponent, you can multiply them when you simplify things. So this becomes 7 to the x squared on the left equals 7 times 1 oh, to the power of 1 half times 3x plus 5. Okay, now because of exponential equality, we cross out the bases, and we get x squared equals 1 half 3x plus 5. Now I want to move everything over to the left side because I can tell I'm going to have to factor this. And, you know, there's more work to do yet, but we'll just start with this. Okay, now before I can factor it, it would really help if everything were written just as x squareds, x's and numbers. So I'm going to get rid of this fraction right here. That's what I'm looking at. I want to get rid of that. So we'll multiply both sides by 2 and clear out the parentheses. So that's 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Remember to distribute that minus sign through the parentheses. And now we can just factor this, whether you factor by guessing or the big X or whatever method you like. Uh, I know I'm going to have 2x and x as my two factors on the left. And on the right, my two factors are going to be 5 and 1. So we think about what has to go where. If I put a 5 over here, I'll end up with a factor of, or a term of 10x, and that's, that's way too big. So let's try putting the, um, let's try putting the 5 somewhere else. Put the 5 over here and a 1 over here, and just a little look at this means, uh, yeah, that has to be a negative 5 and a positive 1. Okay, and if you distribute these terms out, you'll find that they'll work out to equal negative 3x, right? You have negative 5x in the middle, and positive 2x on the outside, so those add up to your negative 3x linear term. And then I say, well, x equals negative 1 and 5 halves, and that solves the equation.